This episode is brought to you by Manscaped.com. It's never too early to play holiday music, and it's never too early to start thinking about gifts. Whether it's for a friend or the friends in your pants, you can make this season to be jolly with Manscaped. Do your little drummer boy a favor and use the Lawnmower 4.0 to avoid another silent night in the bedroom. Then add in Manscaped's top of the line shower products to have the people thinking, All I want for Christmas is you. Santa cares about his sack, and so should you. Look nice when you get naughty by going to manscaped.com and use code GUYJEANSPODCAST for free shipping and 20% off. That's manscaped.com and then use the code GUYJEANSPODCAST for free shipping and 20% off. My guest today is Mike Pyle. Super stoked to have him on the show. And I met him in my fly shop years ago. And I, you know, I'm super stoked to have him here. He's uh, he's a super fishy guy. He loves to fly fish, but he's also a retired American professional mixed martial artist who competed in the welterweight division of the UFC. He's been a professional competitor since 1999, and he is the former WEC welterweight champion. And he's also competed in Strike Force, Elite XC, Affliction, M1 Global, and for the Los Angeles Anacondas of the IFL. He invited me to come see him fight in Las Vegas, and I went, and it was mind-boggling. And uh, I'm going to talk to you, uh, oh, excuse me, talk to him about that and that whole that whole story and what it was like to actually see a friend fight live in a huge stadium, um, the MGM Grand, to be in fact. Uh, but uh, without further ado, let's get Mike on the phone. Mike. Guy. <laughs> How you doing, man? I'm doing fantastic. How about yourself? I'm doing super good, and I'm super stoked to have you on the show because uh, we go back a, a ways and are fly fishing friends and that sort of thing, but we have a whole bunch of stuff that we can talk about for sure. And, and uh, first, I wanted to kind of find out what the heck you've been doing, man. I've been kind of following you on, <laughs> on Instagram and whatnot. And it's, it looks like you're like traveling all over the world, man. Where have you been? Yeah, well, I've been traveling because, uh, you know, since I've retired from UFC, as you already know, UFC fighter, um, yeah. I've been doing a lot of movies. I'm a stunt man, I'm a stunt <laughs> actor, awesome. stunt man, flash actor. So I've been, I've been busy traveling and, and working on, you know, cool films and, and meeting a lot of different people. And no, I did not bring my fly rod. I just went to the <laughs> Dominican Republic uh, and I was out there for a couple of months shooting a new Roadhouse movie. And uh, every day I wish I would have, you know, brought my, my fly rod. But, yeah. it, you know, I'm not really familiar with, you know, that side of things when it comes to you know fishing or whatever over there but i'm sure i could have found you know a guy jeans over there somewhere <laughs> so what, what's the what you mean like the roadhouse the old movie the roadhouse the that's right with they're remaking it, yeah. oh, oh no yeah, way sure enough and they're, what, they're remaking that the lead the lead in that uh patrick swayze's character uh which was dalton yeah his uh is uh I'm drawing a blank here. Uh, Gyllenhaal, Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh, no way. Cool. Yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal was the lead on that. Uh, Connor McGregor was the bad guy. Everybody knows Connor. Right on. And, uh, I was, a I was doubling for one of the actors on the, on the show. So we, we looked similar. So I did all the, all the crashing into things and falling off of stuff and, <laughs> and, awesome. the fight, and all the fight scenes and, and, and all those things that some of the actors are not familiar with, you know, taking punishment. <laughs> yeah. How did you get into doing that, man? Well, um, the, the way that that kind of occurred, a friend of mine, which is Randy Couture, his friend was a, a coordinator, a stunt coordinator on, on movies in New York. And we all sat around the table one night after a fight. I don't remember whose fight. It was someone's fight. And he's actually a judge in the UFC. Uh -huh. And um, so we all, you know, we all made friends. And then, you know, he hit me up out of the blue. He said, hey, do you want to, what do you think about, you know, 
films and you want to come in and maybe get thrown over a table on a Bruce Willis movie or something. I was like, well, sign me up. Let's go. <laughs> so, you know, he brought me in and I earned my, my, uh, credentials to be able to, uh, get into the SAG with a uh, SAG, uh, is yeah. a guild. It is a, uh, a union, right? So I got yeah. in, I got in with that one job and I've just been, you know, kind of trucking along throughout my career. I'd pick and choose sometimes that I'd be able to go and leave, leave home and not have to train for a fight and things like that. Right on. And, and yeah, so it, it, it was cool. It's just, you know, and it's, you know, people like to sit down and talk with fighters. They think they're interesting and they want to know, they want to know you and they want to involve you in other things because, you know, you don't get to meet a lot of fighters on this planet, you know, and, yeah. and, and sit and talk with them and, and, or, and or fish with them or, right. you know, stuff like that. They're, they're a different breed. So it's, it's interesting to, to, to folks. So are you getting, especially in the movie industry? Are you, are you actually, do you, are you getting hurt or is it kind of like, is it all kind of like planned out where you don't get hurt? Or are you well, like getting hurt every once in a while? Well, oh, yeah, okay. So yes, yes to that answer. Every once in a while, things <laughs> do hurt. But you know, let's say, let's say, guy jeans walks into the fly shop, and he's the bad guy, and he comes, and guy comes in, and he says, "This is my fly shop now." But he's got two goons with him that's standing beside him. Yeah, they don't say anything, and they just start, you know, shooting. They just look mean and menacing, and they don't really, you know, those guys. But sometimes those are the roles that you get where you are, you're, you're the bad guy, bad guy. Yeah. You're right. You know, you don't really do much. You don't talk, you know, you just do, and you do a little fight, grab somebody, throw them over the, the fly counter or, and, <laughs> and, you know, whatever. So right. that, that's the way that could play out. But then there are some times where like in this, in, uh, for instance, in this example, I, was doubling, uh, in, in, in roadhouse, I was doubling this actor where, you know, Jake Gyllenhaal needed to like, you know, come running at me and spear me into a wall mm -hmm. and crash into the wall. And then I go down a flight of stairs and then he, you know, kicks me and then does this and that and the other, which, you know, a lot of actors aren't, you know, aren't up for that. So that, that one did hurt, <laughs> you know, and, and <laughs> that, that one hurt. Um, uh, you know, it hurts the first time, right? But yeah. now, now the director says, okay, well, could you, when he pushes you, when he slams you into the wall, maybe do this instead of doing that. Okay. Do it again. Boom. Okay. Now that was great. But this time don't let your foot come up so high. I don't know. You're just small, small things that these directors want and, and yeah. whatever. So, so now you got to do it 10, 15 times. <laughs> so now you've been speared and slammed in the wall 10 or 15 times. So yeah, you get a little sore. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and you get, a, it, it hurts, but it's, it's, it's just like being a kid guy. It's like being a kid and playing war out in the back with a stick and you act like you get shot and you fall and you roll love down it. the hill. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, I love it. Yeah. And you know, and you know, with all my training over the years, I know how to fall down without hurting myself and how to roll over and not, you know what I mean? It's yeah, just, yeah. I have a lot of body awareness. Yeah. So, you know, you know, you keep yourself from getting hurt, but you make it look like it hurt. You make it look like your back broke in half. You make it look a certain way. And it's just, it's, it's all camera BS. What other, what other stunts or shows are you, are you been, or have you been on or you're doing or anything that, uh, um, that, we, that well, we can see out there? Well, the, the most recent was, was Roadhouse. No, the most recent was a Netflix show here in um, Vegas. Uh, a show called, uh, what was it? Obliterated. Uh-huh. Um, so that was the last one. Time before that was Roadhouse. Uh, a lot of times I was a zombie on Fear of the Walking Dead, Tales of the Walking Dead. <laughs> awesome, dude. Um, <laughs> Men in it. Black 3. I was in Men in Black 3, a couple of Jason Statham films, Safe, uh -huh. what else? Um, Dude, several so TV shows. Yeah. 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 Several, Dude, yeah. Isn't that crazy that um, 
that your career would take that route. That's just so cool. Well, I'm glad it did. Yeah. And yeah, it is crazy. So, (laughs) but you know, what about, you have to have a certain skill set to be able to, you know, have, you know, a company, a movie company say, okay, we're going to come in and spend this money on you and we're going to fly you in and do this, that, because you have a special skill set. Yeah. And, and they believe in you and you go out and you perform. It's, you know, it's, it's rewarding at the same time. And, but yeah, it's painful, but not always. <laughs> so are you getting any, um, any speaking parts at all? Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. There was a, yeah. Oh yeah. There every now and again, you know, they'll, they'll say, Hey, what's Mike? Whenever guy slaps this guy over the, 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 uh, the, the rack of leaders over here, you tell him, <laughs> yeah, that's what you deserve. Yeah, that's what you get. Uh-huh. Say a little something or whatever, you know, um, nice. uh, that would be more the stunt acting, but I've done acting as well. Um, uh-huh. I've had a couple of lead roles and, uh, universal soldiers. Regeneration is one of them. Nice. Uh, with Jean Claude Van Dam, Jean Claude Van Dam, dude, you know what's so, so I got to I got to work with him. That was awesome. Awesome. You know what's so cool about that is the residuals, man. The, the, oh my the, god! The, don't free, the, me, don't the, free, the free money, I call it. <laughs> That's right. You, you know, know, you know all about it. Yeah. You know all about it. Yeah, it's like it's crazy, man. You know, um, you know, I I've done a couple commercials or whatever. And I didn't, I wasn't expecting anything, you know, just whatever. And, mm-hmm. and then free money comes in and you're like, whoa, trip out on yeah, what's little, this from? <laughs> a little Christmas present yeah, in the, yeah, uh, in the yeah. mailbox. Yeah. So it's so cool. Man. Yeah. So I was thinking, yeah, you know, oh, and what's ahead. comforting also is, I'm sorry, I stepped on you. No, no worries. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, you know, what's comforting about it too is, yeah, you do have those ridges or ridges and you also have, uh, you know, well, the residuals, you, you just get surprised. You go out, oh, you, you know, and you're also, it's a union too, you know, yeah. so you're building credits, you're building up, you get some insurance, you get, yeah. you know, so it's, it's a great, it's a great environment. It's a, it's a great business. Um, it's lucrative. Yeah. You know, if you're working constantly, if you're just going from one job to another, which, <clears throat> yeah. which is good, but you know, I got my nine year old here, you know, when they're nine, you don't, you don't want to be gone too much, but yeah, you know, he, he's going to get older and he, you know, his dad go away and you know, he's going to have his <laughs> own little thing going. But yeah. for now it's a little hard sometimes being gone, but you know, sure. yeah, I know it's all for the best. Yeah. Oh, I'm so happy for you, man. That's so, that's so yeah, cool. Thanks, man. I thanks. was, um, I was thinking, um, uh, and maybe you can, Talk about it, but how how did we meet? Well, do you remember? I, we, I went fishing. In, I went fishing in Kern, California, and I went to a place called Kern Fly Shop. <laughs> yeah. And I needed I needed to know. I needed to come in there first of all. I needed to come in there first of all and buy some some flies. Yeah. And then I needed to get some information. Yeah. <laughs> and. Um, so I was bugging you. All right, here we go. Here we do this. And now, yeah, this is the best. Matter of fact, come outside. I'm going to show you the map that's on the wall. Uh-huh. Here, here, and here is a great place. You can get in here. You're on foot. Great. All right. And you go, mm-hmm. go up this way, that, and the other. Mm-hmm. And I, you kind of were, were kind of looking at my ears a little bit. <laughs> and I think you inquired. I think you inquired. You inquired about, you know, it's like, I, you, I think you were kind of like, do I? do I know you or have I seen you somewhere or do you fight or something? I said, yes, sir. I do. I fight. You know, I knew it. I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew that. Yeah. I was, and, uh, I, yep. I, yeah. was, I was a fan. I was a fan and I knew, I knew who you were when you walked in the shop. I'm like, that's, that's freaking Mike Pyle, dude. That's, you know, <laughs> I was like, that's Mike Pyle. And I had watched yeah. you, I had watched you fight, you know, uh, many times, you know, on TV and I was just, you know, and you walked in and then I was like, I'm pretty sure that's him, man. Right on. And yeah. then, and then, <laughs> yeah, we, that was cool. And then you, yeah. And then we, we just hit it off and then, and then, you know, the conversation become, became a, a bit more lax and you're like, all right, 
here's the spots you need to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then we, and then we, I came out another time and you go, you know what the hell with it? I got the day off. Let's go boys. I'm going fishing. You coming with me. I said, damn right. I'm coming. <laughs> awesome, and then man. we, 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 we trekked up, uh, where did we go? We went up, uh, we went way up on the current somewhere, man. Yeah. We went way up. Yeah. We hiked and in. One fellow was with us. That yeah. one fellow was with us, and he he trekked that whole damn river in in a uh, strap on sandal. Yeah, I remember he broke he broke his sandal on the way down. He forgot, <laughs> well, first of all, he forgot his boots. That's and, why. And yeah, that's, that's that, right. that was right. Dane, that was Dane Varner. And, Dane, that's right. Yeah. Dane. And he forgot his boots, and he's all, "Well, I'm just going to hike in these uh, these flip flops." <laughs> and I mean, we didn't hesitate either. We're like, "All right, well, we're going fishing." You- Let's go. And we went down a gnarly trail, and oh, and, and, awesome. and we went way down the, the river, and it was gorgeous. Yeah, and we had a great time. It was gorgeous. Yeah, it was it was amazing. Yeah. You was you were trying to turn me onto that tin car the whole the, the whole time, and I I just wouldn't I wouldn't bite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I was like, right? nah, I know how to catch him on this one. Uh-huh. I know how to catch him on this. One. I should I should have done. You know, I, I've since invested in one as well. Yeah. And then, um, then, uh, I think you, let's see, did you come up and, um, you were promoting, I think it was, you were, I mean, you might've been promoting the, the brand fish on. Correct. And, Correct. Yeah. And, that was, that, yeah. And then, um, you were up in Kernville at the music, music festival and, and then we just, we, we became uh, better friends and then, yep. dude, and then you said, Hey, guy would you ever be interested in coming to one of my fights <laughs> I'm yep. like, are you kidding me and Hell so yeah and so um you invited me to come down there and and uh and uh, got me into uh watch you fight at the mgm grand and that yep. was unbelievable because i have always been a fan of yours but also to actually see you you know my friend fight in a real fight was like pretty amazing man pretty pretty intense you know just to just to be there <laughs> and you know what was so cool was you know uh watching you fight and everything and then after the fight you you came back to the seat and you're all, all right let's party <laughs> yeah let's go and you know unfortunately i think you know i don't even want to bring it up but i think i might have dropped the ball that night i i don't think so well you oh you really you, did i win oh that that night i don't think so i think i might have dropped the ball yeah. mm-hmm but Which, I, but you know. but dude, we just you know we went out and had a great time. It was awesome. Yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. I knew you. I knew you'd love that. I knew you'd be up for it. I, I was just waiting for a good time. Yeah, dude, that was insane. And you know, you know, you up. I got to tell people about you know what it's like. I mean, you know, if, if no one's ever been to a, a UFC fight, especially like in a big stadium like the MGM Grand, mm-hmm. it, it's kind of like. You know, I, and you came back to the seat, and I'm like, dude, this is like you're like a gladiator, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of what it's like, you know. You guys come out, and there's this huge stadium, and these two dudes are going at it, and it's it's so intense, and it's just it's it's really really fun. I mean, if if, yeah. if you've never been to a UFC fight, you got to go and experience it live because it's just a, it's just an amazing experience yeah it's definitely different than watching it on the, on the couch right yeah and and if you know somebody it's even better <laughs> oh yeah you get, that's right you get to interact yeah in, in, interact with everyone and and dude, yeah, you, you, yeah, you, you had the dude, you had the dude like i was with uh your wife and and uh your buddy and his chick you know and um, you got whoever you were fighting that night into a, I kind of almost, almost got him to tap, you know, and it was, he slipped out cause you guys were so slippery. You were so sweating so yeah. much and he slipped out, but we we're, ah, you know, everybody <laughs> screaming like we thought it was going to happen. You know, it was just, yeah. So did I, so did I, so did I. It it's was like so, when you got that good, you got that good trout on, you saw the swell when he hit and you're like, <laughs> beep, comes unbuttoned and you're like, no, exactly. No, right. I had him. I had him. I got to ask you. If I would have just done this, if right. I would have just done that. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I got to ask you, I mean, you've, you've done in a, a, a ton of fights, right? And close to 50. Yeah, exactly. And, and what, I mean, it, do you get like, 
Do you get nervous going out there, like right before the fight? Is it something oh, that you damn you're, straight? You just are just nervous. I mean, you got to oh, yeah. be nervous. It's just crazy. You right? have to be. You know, I you know I use the analogy of like, okay, there's a strip of forest right through here. Mm-hmm. There's no tigers in there. Just get to the other side, and so you're just going to be just nice and lax, and you're going to be chill, and you're going to be cool. But if you know there's a gosh damn tiger in there. You think you're going to be nervous and you're going to be high alert and you're going to be stealthily moving around trees. You're going to be very alert and you're going to be in the moment. You're going to be, yeah. you're going to be very alert and your eyes wide, you know, you're going to, yeah. you'll be in the moment. And if you're not in the moment, then that moment will be taken away from you really quick. The next thing you know, that tiger's got you being the fighter, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't have those kind of those 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 nerves is what keeps you alive and keeps you keeps you moving, keeps you motivated, yeah. keeps you in the, in the now. Yes, yes, the now exactly. Yeah. Anybody that says that they're you know they're not nervous that you know they're they're, not, they're they're full of crap. Yeah, I mean you have. There's a man going to be standing in front of you and he's going to be trying to knock your head off. <laughs> and it's probably not going to feel good. You know, <laughs> right. you're going to get kicked in the legs. You're going to get kicked in your body. You're going to get kicked. You're going to get punched. And it might not be the first round that, it, that you know, that one or the other falls. You know, it could be all the way into the third round. Mind you, these are five minute rounds. You get one minute rest in between. Now you've walked out as third round. You've already taken some punishment. I mean, he's taken some punishment. Not, you know? Yeah. What, yeah, we're ready to get each other out of there. What, somebody's got to go, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know? So, yeah. Do you ever, I mean, when you go in, I I think I, I, I talked to you about this one time before is like, you cannot, you, you have to be, you know, in control of your, of your mental state. Like you cannot, it's almost like, I think we were, we were talking about this where you cannot get like mad. You have to, you have, you have to like stay, you know, focused, like you, you know, like some, some fighters get like really mad and, mm -hmm. you know, like lose, lose control kind of a deal. And, mm -hmm. and you were talking about, I think you were talking about this one time where you're saying, yeah, you have to be in control. You know, it's, it's a, it's a game and you have to be really aware of what's going on and you can't get, let your emotions take control. Otherwise you're, you're, you're going to lose it. Right. Is That's that right. You'll make, you'll make, you'll make critical mistakes yeah. out of, out of, out of, uh, frustration um yeah. anger <clears throat> yeah. if you want to try to be mad about the situation it's not really a, a good it's not a good problem solver right you, mm -hmm. you have to you have to uh, throughout all the chaos it has to be controlled there's controlled chaos that's going on and, and you know over the years you, you develop a numbness to uh the actual danger that's there and just accept it and just make sure that you're, you're, you are, uh, correct in your form, you know? So meaning like if I throw a punch, I'm going to make sure the other hand's not in my pocket, you know, all the way down to my waist, I throw one hand and now I'm totally open. Yeah. And that, that's where, you know, some, sometimes you'll get caught up and he'll get you good. Something hurts a little bit and you'll, Oh, you son of a gun. I'm coming to get you. <laughs> and you'll make a, you'll make a, you'll make a bad mistake and you'll, you'll, you'll open up your defense. You'll get a little reckless, a little careless, and everyone's seen it. That that that's familiar with you know either boxing or any competitive sport. That you know you begin to you know throw these big haymakers that are trying to just finish. Mm -hmm. You know you're exhausting yourself. Now you're missing the guy, and you you miss him by a hundred yards. Yeah. And now you got to try to make up for that. And then now he hits you twice after you miss him. You know, and now he's up. You know it. You, yeah. you have to find a peace within, with all, within all that, that chaos. And, you know, that's, that's the art behind it. You know, that's where everyone is different and how they handle the pressure, how they handle, you know, maybe taking a very hard leg kick that, that really like takes you out of the moment where your, your rhythm is not there anymore or you're, 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 you're not synced where you know you're not in, in sync like you were a minute ago and now you, you're having or maybe he kicks you know tries to kick you in the head and maybe you kind of block it but damn that 
that felt like a baseball bat went across both my arms and now they're kind of numb and tingly. Like, what do I do now? Mm-hmm. You know, you got to be able to just shake it off and, and rely on, you know, your past experience, uh, and, uh, and, and just keep trucking forward and, and just eyes on the prize, man. Eyes on the prize the whole time. Mm-hmm. Is there, Oh yeah. That's, is there... that's hard to do. It's hard to, you know, figure that out, you know, eat to each, each person has their own way of dealing with, with all that. And, and mm-hmm. you know, you could get one opinion from one cat, get another from another mm-hmm. and, and neither one of them makes sense to you, but it, they make sense to him, you know, and that's all that matters. One of the things I thought was really cool uh, when we were walking out of the stadium together and we were all, we were walking out to go to wherever we were going. Um, everybody was like, you know, other fighters even were like, um, good fight pile, you know, way to go, you know, good, yeah. good, you know, all that. Everybody, you know, was walking by even fans and stuff. But what I thought was cool was all the other fighters that were there watching the fight or that were in the fight or whatever, or were fighting that night too. how everybody was just so respectful to each other, you know, the other, yeah. to the other fighters and stuff. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, there's a good camaraderie that goes on with with, with all of us. You know, we 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 don't know each other. We we don't have a personal problem with each other. You know, we meet that night. Uh, you know, whether it's the other fighters or whatever, they we all have mutual respect because we know what it's like. Yeah, to walk into the octagon and have that damn cage closed behind you, and then oh, that's yeah. it, buddy. You're yeah. in it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. They know what that feels like and they have mutual respect. You're a brother of the sword, you know? Totally. Yeah. Well, has there been, ever been anybody where you were just like, you know, the fight got booked or whatever and you were just like, okay, but this dude's gnarly. I got to get, I got to make sure my shit's together on this one. <laughs> oh yeah. And you know, that, that, that's a good point. Uh, yeah. and regardless, you know, the stature or the, uh, popularity of whomever it was that I was going to face or the less popular or the less skillful that I might, in my opinion, might've been, you have to treat that as a 200 pound you know, lion every yeah. single time. And you watch his claws. You, you gotta, you have to, you have to treat it as though every single time, because the time that you think, you know, uh, that, you got this and he's a lesser that he's any lesser than you, man. Next thing you know, man, your ass is on the mat and you're, you're, you're down. They knock you down and, and because you just, you, you didn't really think there was a, you didn't really think there was a tiger in the forest, you know, Yeah. <laughs> you really didn't think that he could do what he could do. And the next thing you know, you go, Whoa, Holy moly, <laughs> you know, buzz, he hits you real good and gives you a good buzz. And you're like, okay, all right. <laughs> then you're going to have to step this up. Um, I've never had any animosity toward any fighter I've ever fought. Mm-hmm. I never had any, uh, history with anyone where we just did not like each other. Mm-hmm. And it was just, you know, trash talking back and forth. Like there was never a time where I just can't wait to get yeah. my hands on you and prove there was just, it was always just about myself. I want to prove to me that I, I, I have sharpened my skills over these certain months and I've gotten better since the last time. I'm the better me walking in here tonight than I was the last time, whether I won or lost, I'm the best, I'm, I'm, the, I'm a better Mike pile yeah. walking in this time. And, and, and if you just stay focused on that and stay focused on crafting your skills and not worry and not keeping up with the Johnsons and just do you, you because that's what you can control, right? I can't control what, you know, how hard the other guy's training or what his, if he's, you know, working on flying arm bars and, you know, yeah. and this, that, or the other, I can't worry about all that because now I'm, my, 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 my thought process is in the wrong place. There's nothing I can do about anything else, but what I am doing and my preparation. And, you know, over the, it took a, it took a while to, you know, yeah in the beginning to kind of just like, you know what, just do me, make sure that I'm the best that I can be. And then we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. You know, some people have no idea how, how good a shape the fighters have to be in. I mean, if, if, 
you know, you think about it, you know, you guys, are you guys doing uh, five minute rounds most of the time? Most of the time. Yeah. yeah. We, we will try to simulate, try to simulate those, you know, that, that, that output, that exertion yeah. for that five minutes that would be, you know, on the night. Yeah. I mean, that's just, I mean, if anybody has like gone full force for a minute, you're, oh. you're, you're exhausted, let alone, you know, three, three, five minute rounds. I mean, yeah. your body is shot, you know? So people, yeah, people, believe me, I've done a, I've done a few of those. I've done a, <laughs> I've done a few where they went all three or they went into the third round and yeah, buddy, it's just like, God, oh, some one of us need to get one of us out of here, buddy. Cause this is, I'm getting tired. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the other yeah, thing the preparation would be yeah. you know, I'll run you through kind of the preparation yeah. so on a, on a Monday let's just say on a Monday I would do some strength and conditioning whatever that might be you know move some weights around um, pick something up put it back down you know the old traditional weight lifting kind of stuff but in a in the form of uh, maybe kettlebells or something uh-huh. instead of like a bench press. Cause that, you know, we wouldn't really use a bench press in a fight that much. Right. So yeah. we, we try to be as agile and strong as we can. And then that'll, you know, it's twice a day, every day, you know, so in the morning time, maybe I'd go in and do some strength and conditioning and may, and then later on in the evening, go in and, uh, uh, do some kind of type of a drill, some type of a drill that, that pertains to the, to my fighter, like he's a good wrestler. Okay, well then I need to, what's called a sprawl. A guy tries to get in and get your legs, you need to sprawl down on top of him, get away from him, get back on your feet, and maybe try to box him. Or mm-hmm. whatever whatever, whatever that strategy might be, work on those kind of things. And then on a Tuesday, change that up and perhaps go in and do some jujitsu and, you know, for a few hours that morning and then take a rest, come home, eat, uh, you know, get, get rested, go back in later on in the evening and then maybe hit pads with your coach, do some, some Muay Thai pads or maybe your boxing coach. And then on a Wednesday, go in and maybe do some really hard, hard strength and conditioning, some sprints, hard sprints up a hill, Mm -hmm. back down the hill, back up the damn hill again, back up and down, you know what I mean? And just really push yourself and then take the rest of the day off and then go back in and kind of repeat that Thursday and that Friday. Mm-hmm. And usually it's an eight week camp. So about four weeks at the four week mark, I'll take a Friday off and let's just say, this is my plan. I'm taking Friday off. I'm going to see guy. I'm going to go and see guy. Go I'm going to go and get a guide with guy and I'm going to go and I'm going to fish for those three, four days. I'm going to camp out in the woods. I'm going to look at the stars. I'm going to, I'm going to just push the reset button. I'm gonna let my body rest, and I'm gonna do what one 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 of one of my deepest loves is to fish. Yeah. Uh, I love to fish. I, I love it. Yeah. Um, I love to fly fish more than anything. So that's what I would always do, and I would take that time. Then I'll come back and I'll repeat all that again for the next four weeks, and then you know, next thing you know, we're we're it's fight night. Yeah. So it's very it's it's very demanding on the body. You know, and I might grab a massage once a week, you know, have a, have someone that's, you know, skilled to come over and twist me up and crank me all over and you know, mm-hmm. try to help me repair my body. And so, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot, you know, it's, you know, being a fighter, it's, it's, it's a, it, you have to live that lifestyle. You can't really, um, you can't, you can't fall too far behind because you got to stay in shape. You always have to be training you have to be doing something that pertains to fighting you know and staying sharp and so you know you have to live that lifestyle and i lived it since 97 until i retired in 2018 right and you were and i'm so were, glad to be retired <laughs> were you you were, were you were 40 when you retired 42 which, which is con- retired at 42 i'm 47 now isn't that considered like older too like at oh very yeah and you were still oh, going very, right very, very. Yeah, I'm yeah. one of the few that 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 done it in uh in you know in the past. There there are a good there's a grip of guys yeah that that fought up into their forties, but there's not many. Yeah. Not many at all. Especially in UFC. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think I thought I think you were forty when, when I saw you fight. I think that's well, don't I mean. remind me. 
how old I am now. <laughs> yeah, I might have been. What do you remember what year that was, Kai? That was like uh like maybe like uh when did you read yeah, yeah, I think it would might have been like uh yeah, eighteen. 2000, 18, yeah, yeah. 2018. Yeah, 39, 40 then, yeah. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's interesting that that you use fly fishing as like kind of your zen. You know, mm -hmm. you know as your as your peace, you know, which I do too. I do the exact same thing. I yeah, think that's you how can relate, I'm Yeah, sure. that's how we relate for sure. Isn't that interesting? I mean in that that oh, my uh, God. you know that you love it so much that you do that to like you know not 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 only relax but it's just part of you you have to do, you have you have to do it it's like something yeah. you have to do yeah you know? and you I, have to i was i was talking to somebody about this and they like do you always have to fish and i'm like yes yeah <laughs> yeah the answer is yes <laughs> i was like yes i do well, why buddy like, i can why? see myself out there right now i i you know, a very select water because I'm, because I'm now 70 something and maybe even older. Yeah. I can see myself still just maybe, maybe that's deep, not deep enough for me to cross over to that side. Cause that, that yeah. scene looks so good, but um, yeah. you know, I can see myself there with my little aid, my little, my little stick helping me across Absolutely. and finding my perfect spots. And then the times that I don't have those perfect spots, I'm still going to be just, that's when, I think that's when we're going to master our cast the best and our mending at, the, at that point, <laughs> you know, because, right. because right now what we, we can just get over and get in front of, we can go where we need to. Yeah. So we don't have to be as technical, which I'm, I'm, I'm sure we are technical, but we don't have to be as technical as when we get, you know, when we get into those latter years where, yeah. It's like you just stand right there on the bank and do anything you damn well want to do. And you can mend anything you want and you don't have to even step foot in the water. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Just float. We can, I can we see can myself float. there. Yeah. Yeah. So are you, are you, are you fishing like a, a lot of the times are you just like cruising up to Utah and fishing up there in that zone? Yeah. I got, I got me some, got some cool I spots. Got, I got some good, you know, I got some spots up there, but you know what? I just brought one of my other stunt buddies up and he, he's got a, a, a nice place and he, he's Argentinian. So he's got a, his, his father left him some land and a house and things. So he frequents back and forth, which I have to get to. That's another, uh, I have to get out there and finish. That's another story. But yeah. he, uh, you know, he's always sending me these pictures of these, these beautiful fish. I mean, they're just gigantic. Is he, is, he in, all day. is he in Argentina? Sorry? You said he's in Argentina. Yeah, he's okay. in Argentina. Uh -huh. Yep. And, uh, but he's not there. I mean, he has, that's there for him. That's, that's, but he, he still works out here and he lives two miles down the road from me, but I'm always, you know, I've always been telling him, I was like, man, I have this spot, man. I got this little slum buster that uh -huh. I tie up and, and I got a little sparkle in there and uh -huh. I'm telling you this is a <laughs> small stream, but uh, you'll be very surprised at these damn close to two foot fish you can pull out of there every <laughs> now and again you can get some 2022s for sure a couple of days oh, okay let's do this let, let, let's go and it's this little spot up in uh in the Painwich area i'll say yeah 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 and and buddy it is it is it's out of this world it is it is gorgeous yeah uh and it's oh, it's in the middle of nowhere and the fish in there are ferocious. They, they just love to hit a streamer. I mean, you can nymph them if you want, but it's, it's, it's streamerville there. You, you, you uh, clean a, you know, a, a size eight up there with a little bullet head on there to get it down. No yeah. sinking line, just floating uh -huh. line uh -huh. and just cast up a quarter up a little bit and let it sink and you just get to strip it and the buddy hang on. That's killer, man. So oh, cool. it's just gorgeous. And, you know, the thing, and, and here's what I want to do. One of my buddies, we were up there and we were so damn tired of catching them on them damn streamers. We were switching things up. So he switched to a mouse pattern uh -oh. and holy cow, yeah. buddy, these fish were coming out of the water a foot in the air. <laughs> awesome. They were coming up and bang and flopping out of the water and coming in. We were, we, oh, you can imagine the, the joy on our face when we seen that. It was like a, <laughs> you know, a 22 inch brown that come up out of the water to try to, you know, stun that, to stun that mouse and come back and try to get them. 
And I was yelling at him too. He come up, boom, and he hit it. I was like, don't strike. I said, leave it, leave it, leave it. He's coming back. He'll come back. Sure enough, man, he come back. Cause he thought he stunned it, right? Mm -hmm. Come back, grabs it. And we were on some, we were on some good fish that day, man. It was, and that place is absolutely great. Was that, were you guys fishing like in the middle of the day or was that kind of like in the evening or That was morning? middle of the day, middle guys. Of the day. That was middle of the damn day, man. Huh. Middle of the day. That's interesting. Sure was. Well, it's got no pressure. There, there's no trails along the side of it. There's no, yeah, okay, there is trail. Yeah. But it's, it's game trail. Yeah, yeah. You know? There, there, you, you're not going to find a, you're not going to find a leader packet lying around. You're not going to find a, anything. That's you're not going to just killer. You know, yeah, it's just it's pristine. It's untouched. Uh, yeah, there. You know, I've ran into. I've been fishing out there about I don't know ten years now. I've ran across maybe three people, and one of them was a rancher that just came up on his big black horse, herding herding some of the cattle around. Mm -hmm. We sat and talked for a little bit at breakfast, getting make a. Uh, gave him some bacon and eggs and we sat and had some coffee and he was telling me about, you know, yeah, you know, how he, know, he comes out here and fishes with his kids and, and, and it, it's just, it's great. It's, it's, it's just a great spot, man. It's so cool to be able to have something like that, you know, um, outside of Vegas, you know, to be able to go to and, exp yeah. and, and enjoy, you know, with, with no people. Yeah. I mean, what's that like? That must be insane. So cool. What about, have you, have, have you gotten into any of the, like the local stuff there around Vegas, you know, like any of the striper stuff or any, any of that, like no. in, in meat or is it meat? No, I haven't. Yeah. I haven't. Uh, I, I and, and probably because I haven't been introduced to the right people, you know what I mean? I haven't, uh -huh. you know, crossed paths with someone who has the knowledge yeah, yeah. Uh, or else. Yeah. A hundred percent. I'd be out there. Yeah. yeah. A hundred percent. I would. Yeah, because I've heard I've heard that uh, is it Lake Mead that's right there. Yeah, Lake Mead is Lake, there. Yeah, Lake, Lake Mead has stripers. Colorado flows into it. Yeah, yeah, and then down below the dam, what is that dam? That's a big old dam that you guys have there. And then below, Hoover, yeah, Hoover Dam. Then down below yep. that, there's stripers and other stuff. Down yeah, below. oh, there's big one. Yeah. Oh, there's know. big ones over there. But those guys, they like they they like to troll with you know like big six inch. Uh, trout oh, because they? those they're, they're they're they release from the hatchery they'll bring in and they'll release and those guys hit on those release times they'll come up and they'll start trolling when they put the fresh batch in yeah. and buddy let me tell you uh, uh, there, there's one I'm just not going to go out there and conventional fish like that I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, it's nothing wrong with it nothing wrong with it all but yeah. I don't get to work my line I don't get to work my you know I don't get to cast and Mm -hmm. It's just not a thing, but holy moly. Yeah. Let me tell you, these guys, they, they, they smack some big stripers up there. Some big ones. Right below Hoover Dam? Uh-huh. Yeah. I would, yep. I would, I'd be into that, man. I, uh, oh, yeah. I love going striper, uh, fly fishing up in the Delta. And, um, I've done it down, down towards Laughlin a little bit. And, uh, you know, the small mouth and the large mouth in the, yeah. in the river there. Yeah. I, I love all that stuff, man. I'm, Oh, I do too. Yeah. I do too. You know what I wish we had, you know what I really wish we had, you know, to, you know, for my boy to, to be able to, you know, fight, you know, 20, 30 fish a day. And so I wish we had some, some ponds and some smaller lakes around here that, that, that had, uh, you know, bluegill population in there because yeah. you could just go and just kill them, yeah. you know, especially when they're on the bed, when they're sitting on the bed in July or mm -hmm. June, you can see, you know, three, four foot of water, just roll cast up, let it sit, watch the indicator, just kind of go down. Cause that's what I used to, well, that's what I, when I, when I, when I, would, when I go back home in Tennessee, there's these ponds everywhere. And that's exactly what I do. Take my four weight, uh, put some kind of hairy, a hair's ear always works. Mm -hmm. Uh, little, little split shot at the end, drop it down about three feet. And just with a little, you know, a little football indicator on the end of it, just roll cast it over, let it sit, nothing's happening, maybe pull it a little bit. And when it sits right over one of those beds, those those damn bluegill come up there just to clean it out. And that, that indicator goes down and you're and before you know it, you're there, you know, three, four hours, you're twenty, thirty fish in. 
Absolutely. You know? <laughs> yeah, for sure. And and that's, that, that's a kid's dream, you know, because just sitting and waiting and all that stuff is how you lose the attention, right? Or, yeah. you know, the younger ones. But yeah. not not bluegill fishing, man. That, <laughs> that You'll light them up all day and their eyes will light up. And I just wish I had more of that here, but, it, you know, I'm in the desert. It, it so, doesn't exist. So have you gotten your son into fly fishing a little bit or fishing? I did. Uh, uh-huh. I do. Uh, we have... Uh, there's a, so there's a, uh, in Utah, about two hours away from me is a place called St. George. And just about 30 miles outside of that is a small Colorado cutthroat, uh, no Bonneville, Bonneville. Okay. They're Bonneville cutthroat. And that's all that's in there. And they're, they're stacked full guy. Really? I mean, they are, they, they are stacked full and that's a, uh, literally on a, on a bad day, it's 20 fish, <laughs> you know, awesome. you walk about two miles, uh-huh. walk about two miles, you get in, walk upstream about two miles, you're 20 fish in easy on a hopper. <laughs> nice. And it's just beautiful. And you know, the thing is, is I use a size eight hopper uh-huh. just to stay away from the six and eight inches uh-huh. and get the 10 <laughs> and 12 all day long. Uh-huh. Cause the mouths are so big, you know, cutthroats mouths are so large. Yeah. They can inhale a big eight, you know, a big thick, you know, a size eight hopper all day. So that's where I bring him. Nice. And uh, this year, uh, this summer, he's going to be doing his own casting. But usually I put him on my shoulders. I'll walk up the stream. I'll see, you know, I'll see something. I'll cast. He's on my shoulders. I set the hook and give it to him then set him down. Mm-hmm. Right, but now he's getting so damn heavy. I can't, I can't carry the, the big old dude around anymore. And he's going to have to. He's going to have to get, uh, you know, um, you probably, I mean, the stream is, you know, 10 feet wide at the best average, you know, six. So yeah, eight feet of line out, you just, you know, just pick it up, you know, give it a couple, you know, false casts, one false cast and it's right back in the water. So Sweet. He, he, he's Perfect. doing pretty good. Yeah, he's doing pretty good. There's not a lot of casting involved, but there's enough to where he can learn you know, the cadence of the, of, of the swing, you know, of the, uh, of the cast and things like that. So and a, that's, yeah, a, I could be there fishing in two and a half hours, bare feet in the water. Nice. Does so he have, that's not bad. You know, that's not bad. Does he have a fly not rod yet? All. Does he have a fly rod yet? Oh yeah. He's got a, oh yeah. He's got a three weight. Oh yeah. What, what, what's he got? I think I got that. I got, I got it from you. The uh, Redding. The Reddington. Yeah, Reddington. Yeah, my uh, bad. Yeah, oh, Reddington. So, yeah, I think I picked that up when I was out there last. Hmm. That's like perfect. You had a, you had some deal or something going on there, I think, and I bought a three weight Reddington for you. Sure did. Awesome, man. So he that's what he's been using. Yep. That's so cool. Isn't that cool, man? Yep. That's the best. Oh, I love it, dude. He's gonna re- oh, he's gonna remember that for the rest of his life, man. And he's gonna that's right. He's gonna pass it on to his kids and. You know, yep. all, all that. So how did you get into fly fishing? Well, I got into fly fishing because, and, it, and, and nothing against Lake Mead or anything like that. I just, I'm just not a, a I, I can't run around and chase fish on a fish finder and, and, yeah, and, yeah. and try to find the structure and all that. I just never been about that. Um, I went fishing a couple of times, a few times out here, went striper fishing, did this, that, and the other. And it was just such a large body of water. Yeah. And I just, I, w- I was so lost. Like <laughs> I want to catch some damn fish. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah <laughs> and I, I'm not buying a boat. I'm not buying, uh, uh, you know, all the things that you need, which, Hey, it's still fishing and I, I will do it, but just not on my own, on my own boat. But, so back and forth doing that. And, you know, you know, Jason, my, my old yeah. business partner with yeah. fish on energy, which kind yeah. of depleted through the, uh, un- unfortunately the, the pandemic kind of, kind of killed us. Uh-huh. So with that being said, he was just like, dude, he was like, I've been wanting to fly fish forever. And I was like, me too. I, I, I also want to, and this is 2007. And he goes, well, to hell with it. Let's go to Bass Pro and let's go get a, let's go get a rig. There's a, a, a Utah has some places when we'll just, we'll figure it out. Let's, let's do it. So we did nice. that and we got out in the front we got out in the front there and we're casting, you know, trying to hit the car, you know, 
All right, now hit that headlight. Now see if you can hit that headlight. You know, you know, unbeknownst to us, we're tearing the hell up out of our damn uh, fly line on their asphalt. Right, right, right. <laughs> we don't know what we're doing, but we're figuring it out. And then we started doing some trips together. And nice. then we went to a uh, place called Duck Creek Village for one of the first times, and and I and I was using the caddis, uh, and I immediately started to get into some fish, and I just had a you know a knack for the cast or whatever I understood to be a little more delicate, and I'd be you know so uh, heavy handed with everything, and mm-hmm. and it just came natural, and then I was like, okay, this 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 is the way to go. The, the large bodies of water and all that, I like these streams. I like being able to walk in the water. I like the sound of it. I like what's around me. I like the uh, adversity that it gives you. You got to cast this way. You get hung in trees. You know, you got to stay out of that. Mm-hmm. You know, I, it was a challenge, you know, and, and and that was it. I fell in love with it. I had already loved fishing to begin with. I grew up fishing, and, you know, yeah. you know, sitting and waiting with bait, and, you know, and bass fishing and all the ponds and stuff and, and all that. But, man, I'd always wanted to fly fish. And, that's that. So Jason and I, that's what we did. And, and then we started getting better mm-hmm. and we started to catch more fish. And then we went to, uh, where did we go? Um, I forget that miracle mile. What's the miracle oh, yeah, yeah. mile? Yeah. Um, the plat. Did you guys go to the plat? No, oh, not oh. in Colorado. No, it's the other one right there in Cali. Oh, you're, you're talking about the Walker Walker Walker. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So we went there and we're getting, we're just getting skunked and we ran out of zebra midges. <laughs> and at the time I just began to tie, I mean, we're, we're losing stuff all over the thing. We're getting tangled up, man. We're, yeah. you know, we, we're trying to false cast with Bob with, with indicators and shit on our damn, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> So we're, we're jackasses. And then we're, so we, we're like, all right, we need some more zebra midges. So we go to the little local spot. Yeah. And uh, he's, he's uh, we're like, we need more zebra midges. Well, hi. I was like, we're getting skunked. What do you need to do? And he was, well, what the, he was like, what, what the hell are you doing? What, what's your rig look like? So, well, we got a zebra midge on there and we got this uh, thing of a bobber on here. <laughs> and uh, and yeah. he goes, well, uh, well, you got any weight on it? I was like, what do you mean? Wait. He's like, yeah, you got to put a little slip shot on there, dummy. And then bring, <laughs> you know, bring it up about six, seven inches uh-huh. and, 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 and give it two times the length of what you think <laughs> the depth is. And then watch that damn thing kick around. And then when it pauses, you set the hook and that dude changed our day. That's awesome. I'm like, Oh my God, really? Which ones do we need? Which, what slip shots do we need? Boom. So he gives us these things and we go in and then, and and uh, next thing you know, man, we're starting to we're starting to catch fish. Was that a kid? Like, oh my god, we've been doing it all wrong the whole time, trying to yeah, thinking that a a, a size eighteen with a <laughs> with a little head on it is going to get it where we need it. And so yeah, he changed our day and changed everything. He changed everything for us that day up there at the Walker. Was that? And then we started figuring it out, started yeah. adjusting, and you know, doing the depth and this, that, and the other. Next thing you know. We'd, we're catching fish and then we, you know, we started going to different places and, and, uh, learning more techniques from, you know, you know, guys like you that, that are, that are willing to help knucklehead to come into their fly shop and think they know how to fish and they're, <laughs> they're doing it all wrong. And you give them one simple, one simple thing and, yeah. it, and it just changes, it just changes their whole, uh, pers- right. you know, perspective and their whole, you know, idea of what, what it really takes to, to, you know, produce a, a trout, which are not easy to catch, in, in, you know, in the beginning. Was that Ken Sporting Goods that you went to? In, in It might have been, man. In, in it might have been, but that I wouldn't remember. Is it like a, like, that part. it was like a market slash fly shop. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. sounds like Ken yeah, Sporting probably Goods. Was, yeah. yeah. See, I mean, yeah. that's how uh fly shops should be, you know, just help people out. And yeah. Stoke people out, you know, so they can have a good time. You mm-hmm. know? And, uh, have we, you ever, we were there for two days. We were there yeah. for two days and people are catching fish. We're like, what the hell is going on? I'm like, <laughs> we, we know how to fish. Yeah. And he just asked us a simple question. Like, well, how do you, what's your rig? You know? Yeah. He's like, no, no, no. 
And, the other- and I think maybe guy, I might even been putting that damn slip shot so damn all the way down there, close to the to the zebra <laughs> midge, like right, right on top of you know what I mean? Like yeah. no, 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 you can't do that. Yeah, you got to give us some space. And that <laughs> damn day, and that damn day, we 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 were into fish, buddy. That's awesome. You know, and it was and we were on our way after that. But yeah, everyone should be that way. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I'm that helps the sport. Those guys those guys at uh Ken Sporting Goods up there in Bridgeport, man, they're they're cool people, man. I've I've gone in there too and they've uh they've been always been really friendly and you know, they've got a great selection of fly fishing stuff and it's good, mm-hmm. man. Yeah. It's nice to have that. Yeah. You know, I've I've been in fly ships fly shops across the country where people aren't that friendly, you know. I don't know if you've yeah. ever experienced that, but I have and Oh yeah. You know, and, and that's not the way to be, man. That's yeah. for sure. But yeah, we yeah, we've all experienced that. Where you, yeah. well, you know, it, and you know, you, you got to kind of chop it up to maybe you know maybe that they're having a bad day that day. Yeah, yeah, know? exactly. Maybe, exactly. Maybe you know they their their damn battery was dead when they got up this morning, and they were late getting in, and then they had a flat on the way, and then. <laughs> They just don't really right. care to. They don't really care to tell you to put a damn slip shot on your leader, knucklehead. Just, yeah. just you, you want those two flies good. All right. Hey, have you got but, have you gotten any uh, fighters into fly fishing? Oh yeah, have you? Gray the bully Maynard. Yeah, Gray Maynard. I turned him on to fly fishing. Uh, mm-hmm. So the way the way that I that I first turned him on to it was we went to a place called Animony Creek. That's in Utah. I said, we're going fishing. He's like, I need you to teach me fly fishing. I said, okay, here, here's the best way I think I can teach you. I'm setting the hook and doing this. About 2,000 feet uh, elevation up on top of this, but below uh, where, where, where the stream is that we're camped out on, you take your side-by-side and you, and, you, and you work your way up. And I mean, like you feel like your side-by-side is going to fall backwards sometimes. And some of the, but once you get <laughs> up there, there's, there's two ponds that are up there that are just full of fish. And if, if you can't catch a fish in there, then forget it. You, you're never going to catch a you, You're never going to be able to catch a fish. <laughs> so I thought, all right, I'm gonna, uh, here's my tactic. I'm going to bring you up there. We're going to go up to the still water. We're going to go up there to the pond, and th- they won't leave a fly alone. So I'm going to put the indicator on there, a little football indicator, right? Mm-hmm. A little tiny shot, and uh, I don't remember, some kind of a green caddis midge or something or whatever and they just tear it up and now you just watch uh, first of all teach them to load with that roll cast on the water right teach mm-hmm. them pick it up pop it out there right now do it again now just let it sit let it settle for a little bit nothing's happening kind of drag it another two feet let it sit and then the indicator will just it'll get a it'll it'll bob a little bit it'll start to move now that's when you set and when you set you take you keep your line in your hand when you set, you start, you start stripping, you know, this is not conventional. So you do like this. And then, so we went up there and we just slayed them, drank some beers. Nice. Had a good time. Yeah. Yeah. And so I taught them that. And so then we went down to the, um, to the, uh, to the river, right. To the, to, to the stream. I said, okay, now it's going to be a little bit harder, but you know, everything's kind of basically the same. And, and here you go. Like uh, when you, when you, when you get a little, if you think you're getting a bite, don't swing the hook, the, the whole thing out of the water and fling it behind you and just get a little quick, little snap. And then you'll know if you got them or not. And then I had them on fish, you know, I had them on fish probably about an hour and being on the stream just for putting them on that still water first and teaching them to set and row cast and work his line and, and things like that. And then that was it. He's been hooked ever since. He's sending me pictures all the time. He sends me, he lives in Michigan now. So he's up there and he's always fly fishing. That's awesome. And he's man. Addicted. Yeah. He's addicted to it. That's got, that's so cool. Yeah. Do you think there's, you a... know, did, did you know that name? Gray Maynard? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right on. Yeah, man. Um, I wanted to ask you also, is there, is there a, do you think there's like a, you know, uh, a relationship between fighting and, um, fly fishing. Is there like something that like is similar as far as like the Zen when you're in the, you know, you're yeah. in the pocket. It, can you, 
Can Good you question. Explain? Yeah, I mean, do you do you feel Good that? Good question, or? man. Oh, hundred percent. Because yeah. they're they're it. You you do have to be you. First of all, when I when I walk in when I walk into the cage, I got to be very aware of what he's yeah uh, good at where he's going to be mm-hmm. at where he's the strongest at, um, and in relation to that, I, I need to when I walk in when I step foot into that before I even step foot in the river, I need to I need to analyze it. I need to look and just not just start casting anywhere. I need to understand. Okay, that water's so fast right there no fish are going to be there it's a little subtle over here there's a nice little seam over here i break it down and i look at it in a tactical way just the same that i approach the fight you know uh-huh. so yeah very uh-huh. very similar I, I have to be very accurate yeah you know i just can't fling i can't fling some overhand over there and expect for it to hit and i just can't just fling my my uh if, it, if i'm minting or whatever yeah. i just can't just fling it anywhere I have to be precise and I have to know where my best chance is to get my knockout is or my finish or the best chances for me to, to produce one of one of the dominant fish out of that would be, you know, holding in the better spot, mm-hmm. you know? So yeah, they're very, they're, there's a very similar tactic in, you know, when, you know, when, when you come up and you, and you work it as a grid, you're walking up, up that stream you're, you're just tearing mm-hmm. it apart i mean mm-hmm. just piece by piece no fish <laughs> no fish doesn't have a sore lip in there if there's one in there he's gonna have a sore lip for sure and so is that guy I mean, i'm gonna make sure that i come in and i tactically take uh-huh. you know this you know this stream i gotta be aware of my surroundings i gotta be aware you know there's a a tree behind me over here so I can't mm-hmm. back cast too far. I, I got to stay lower. I got to do sidearm. I got to do this, you know, um, you know, for instance, in a, in a fight, maybe the, the guy's really good at blocking leg kicks. So that's one yeah. thing I'm not going to do. I'm not going to throw leg kicks because it's, it's not yeah. going to do any good. He's too damn good at it. Yeah. You know, so I'm not, I'm going to beat him where he's the weakest. Yeah. You know, so, uh, yeah, very, that's a good question. I yeah. haven't been asked that question before. That's awesome, man. I mean, I knew, I knew it. I, I, I knew the answer before you, you said it just because I, I know you and I know how much you love fly fishing and how passionate you are about fighting. I, I've been also kind of watching it. You're kind of becoming like a, aren't you, are you kind of like a sensei with these younger fighters now and what's not? Are you, Am I what? Are you kind of like a sensei now with these younger fighters? Sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm helping, um, I'm helping coach some of the, uh, stewards of the game yeah. uh, that are coming up and, uh-huh. you know, they've seen, <clears throat> excuse me, they've seen, you know, some of my success and, mm-hmm. and, you know, just the, you know, it's the same as, you know, that, you know, the current back and forth, right. You know, exactly. it on the yeah. every season, you know, it night and day, you know, everything, you right. know, it blindfolded. Right. And so that's kind of the same. That's why, that's why I'll always come to you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I can fish. Yes. I can yeah. fight, but I want to come to you and I want to learn how to better fight this yeah. guy and, or better fish this river right. because you, you, you are, you know, quote the, the quote unquote, the, the, the sensei of that, of that river. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, things that I don't know. A hundred percent. And that's the things you got to let go of your ego. Exactly. And even though you've, you've got 15, 20 fights, I got 50. Yeah. You live on the Kern. Yeah. I don't, you know, bite, you know, you know, you put that into perspective, then you, you know, that there's somebody that always knows more than you and you got to be willing to, yeah. you know, uh, you know, take that in, take that information in and, and, and guarantee you, you'll leave a better fighter and you'll leave a better fisherman. Those young fighters, do those young fighters uh, realize how lucky they are to have you as a, as a coach? Um, I th- probably, you know, yeah. but it's all, it's, it's not even, it doesn't need to be said. I don't, I don't need that affirmation. Yeah. I, I, I know what I've done and they know, and it's yeah. just kind of unspoken. It's, yeah, it's yeah. a bit unspoken. Yeah. Um, you know, they always show their gratitude, you know, they you know, they, maybe they come in, they have a coffee for you. You know, nice. they stop at Starbucks and grab yeah. you a coffee. They know what oh. coffee you like, and you know, thing, yeah. and that that does it all right there. Yeah, no need to speak. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's, you don't have to say a word. That's cool, man. Yeah. Actions, actions speak louder, right? Mm-hmm. 
You'd be a you'd be a good fly fishing guide. Did you know that? Oh, I would love to fly. <laughs> oh my god, I would love it. I would love it. I would love it to death if I had. Oh, you'd be good at it, man. If I had that opportunity, I would not pass it up. Yeah. But but at with with all ego aside, I would have to take a, you know a few couple of few seasons to to learn my fighter, my river, sure, and, and you know what I mean, and, yeah. and not. Yeah. Yes, I've caught a lot of damn trout, but have I caught a lot of trout on this river? Nope. <laughs> Water runs different there. The flows are different. The eddies uh, are different over here. It's different. Yeah. You know. You know. You know what it is. You know how it is. Yeah, it's, man. You know it's crazy, man. Over the over the years, you know, um, you know, I've had the the fly shop and the guide service for twenty years now. You know, and what's interesting is, you know, all the di- all the different. Um, you know, uh, seasons and the, the fires and the, the floods and the muddy water, and, mm. you know, mm. you know, having to deal with, with all that stuff at the same time. And it's interesting, you know, because of that, I've had to, you know, adjust and, yeah. you know, go for different species or whatever it is. And it's, um, you know, it takes a long time, man. It takes a long time to like figure out all the different, you know, aspects of the, of the river if i'm off the water for you know three days i feel like i'm out of touch yeah you know what i mean I, I'm like, I I'm like, you. what the hell's going on here yeah <laughs> something's missing <laughs> yeah yeah it's really strange you know and then you but know that's that, that's that desire and that passion that 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 lives inside of you that will never die you know absolutely and that that's that's and that's what makes you know you know makes you such a great guide your knowledge and, and your, and your, um, and you never give up attitude for, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll yeah. figure it out. Yeah. Water's pushing hard. It's, it, 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 it's ridiculous, but I guarantee you we can find fish somehow. I wanted to ask you one last question. And that is, I mean, when you were a little kid, I mean, talking about passion, you know, like we, we all have this, this passion, this drive to be something, and, you know, some of us find it early in life. Some of us find it later in life. And, you know, like you, you found it, you know, when you were, you know, younger. And what I wanted to find out was, did you always know that you were going to be, you know, a fighter? I mean, is that, was that just in you? Um, did Was it just in you as a, as a little kid? I mean, did it just, were you, were you getting in fights in school where, you just had to defend yourself and then it just kind of led from yeah. there or kind of a thing or what, how did that, how'd that all go down? Well, uh, you know, uh, I grew up, I was born 75. So I grew up in, uh, although I think, I think Bruce Lee was killed in 75, uh-huh. but I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's when he was, when he was killed um, or died, whatever, whatever conspiracy you want to go with. Um, I loved martial arts movies, right? I loved them. I just, I, I was so infatuated that, that a, a human could perform this and, and do these things. And I just, I always found it very interesting. And, uh, you know, a Bruce Lee movie would be on, I'd watch it. Go outside, mom says. Get outside, go kick trees, <laughs> go do whatever, get out of here. Right. Because I'm just, I'm just a ball of energy and I'm, you know, kicking around and what the hell I'm doing. I'm a kid. Uh-huh. Bang, bang, you know, get outside, go outside and go do your thing. So <laughs> I was very, I was always intrigued by the, the martial art. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I grew up, I grew up, uh, I, I wouldn't say poor, but I, I wasn't, I wasn't very, uh, uh, fortunate. Um, so getting into karate classes, plus all the small towns, you know, that I grew up in, I mean, you know, small rural redneck towns, they didn't really even have, you know, karate schools and martial arts schools. It was, mm-hmm. maybe there was one there for like two months and they're like, the hell with this, I'm out of here, I need money here, blah, blah, blah. Um, so again, with that, what that love and that interest for that, I, I, I'd, I'd moved around a lot back, you know, to, to touch on, did you get in fights and things like that? So I, by the time I was in fifth grade, I'd already moved at five different, uh, five different locations, a couple of different skate, uh, states, 
couple of different locations. So I was always the new guy. Um, yeah. uh, I had long hair, I had an earring, no one, no, <laughs> nobody, nobody condoned that, especially in the Bible belt, right? You got an earring. Oh my God. You know, something, long hair. they tried to admit, they, yeah, they tried to keep me from coming to school cause I had an earring. My mom came and shut that down real quick. She's like, show me in the handbook where, uh, a boy can't wear an earring, show it to me right now. And then I'll take him out of school. But if you can't, then he stays. <laughs> and that was the end of that. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I'm always the new guy. Uh, uh, you know, always, you know, someone's got to, you know, sh- you know, protect their turf or whatever as kids. And so, uh, yes, I got in a lot of scuffles and no, I never did lose a fight. <laughs> but I was able to handle myself. I don't know why I just had a knack for understanding battle. I don't know what it was, yep. but, but, you know, I had to prove myself many different times. Um, and then when I was about 18, I, I, I moved to, uh, uh, Birmingham, Alabama. I, I moved to go work with the family business as a machinist. My, my uncle who, uh, uh, was in the country music, uh, I mean, gospel music hall of fame for playing the steel guitar. He was beautiful. Uh-huh. He, was, he was a master on that thing, man. He played for Conway Twitty. Oh, shit. Um, That's um, awesome. He was really, really good, man. He, he was just beautiful on that thing. Um, he's, he's, uh, passed now and may he rest in peace. Uh, so he had the family business over there and, you know, uh, school really wasn't my thing after school. I was like, well, hell with that. I'm going to go work for uncle Billy. So I went out there and I started, you know, working machine shop and working with the, all the family. And there was a Taekwondo school there. So I went and tried that out a little bit. I was like, wow, this is cool. But you know, all they do is, you know, touch each other to score points and stuff. I was like, I don't want to, I want to knock somebody out. You know what I mean? You know? <laughs> I want to, uh, this is not real. This is not going to, do anything if you know if these other cats that are trying to protect their turf that all this stuff is not going to do anything to them so uh at that time i think this is 93 this is when the ufc had came out and there was another cat uh that was at the taekwondo school who was rough like me we wanted to be rough so she would always kind of let us she me our our karate and our taekwondo instructor was a woman she kind of let us go over there and get a little more rough because she knew we wanted to get, you know, hit a little harder, this, that, and the other. Yeah. So we, he and I became buddies and, and, uh, and he came in one night and he goes, dude, you have got to come over to the house and watch this ultimate fighting championship thing. <laughs> it, it, is, it will blow your mind. There's uh-huh. this guy. His name's Royce Gracie, yeah, yeah. and that's not even how you pronounce it. It's Hoist Gracie, but he says yeah. his name's Royce Gracie, <laughs> and, he, and he just chokes the shit out of these people, and they're <laughs> twenty times bigger than him. But you got to come check, dude. You got to come see this, man. So I go over, I check it out, and we're like, "Holy shit, this is the <laughs> coolest thing I've ever seen!" And we're, we're trying to move on each other. Like, Here, take my arm. How's the, oh shit, that hurts! Like, oh my god, that's cool. <laughs> so from that. I was trying to figure out how I, how do I get this jujitsu thing going? How do I learn how to do what these guys are doing right here? Because I want to do that. Yeah. I want to practice that. I don't want to be that at the time, you know, it was, you know, politically it wasn't accepted a lot in a lot of States. They wouldn't allow it. You know, it just, it wasn't a mainstream, you know, every weekend thing. Right. So, um, I didn't want to particularly be a fighter, but I wanted to practice that. I wanted to practice the, uh, the practicality of it. I wanted, uh, that was, you grab a dude and you choke him. That's it. But you know what I mean? Like yeah. that, that, that's it. But if I score six points on them, that's nothing. You know, if I grab them up and I get them by the neck and I do this technical move, you know, that you have to work for to get to, I found it very interesting. I'm like, I want to do that. I want to practice that. So I began to find, you know, videotapes and this, that, and the other. I kind of self-taught myself for a while. Moved back home because the company moved back back home to, to Tennessee and started uh, the company uh, up again running in Paris, Tennessee. 
uh, which has a beautiful lake up there, which I never fished. But um, <laughs> so I, and then throughout that, I I ran across a fella at a pizza hut one day, and he had a Gracie Jiu Jitsu t shirt on while I was at lunch from work. So I just went up to him and said, like, "Hey man, like, what you know? What's your name?" I was like, "Uh." John, uh, he's, just, he's just in there trying to eat and I'm over there bugging him, you know? <laughs> and, uh, I was like, so you got a Gracie, uh, shirt on. Like I'm, I, I, I also practice grappling, but where do you, do you practice? And so we became buddies and he's like, yeah, I got, you know, over at my house in the garage, man, I got mats over there. I got videotapes and this and that. So we became buddies. And then I just went and started entering my, entering myself into, uh, grappling tournaments. And then Hoist Gracie had had, had a, a, uh, seminar in Memphis, Tennessee, which was two hour drive for me. I uh, went over there and made great friends over there still to this day. And, uh, just, so there's a seminar there. So we're learning how to do moves through, you know, Hoist Gracie, the best in the world, like the ultimate fighting championship. Did you get to meet him? Did you meet him at all? Oh yeah, many. No, uh, no, I, no I, I came up under the ranks. I came up under the jujitsu ranks with him. Sure did, man. No way. Yeah, wow. hell yeah. And uh, so, how cool is that? That man? day, that day at the seminar, there was a flyer that was up. The promoter also hosted that seminar. So the promoter of the of these fights that were coming up in like two weeks, there was a poster up there. It was like shoot fighting, and that's a shoot fighting or something. To, something like that. And I, and I was like, how do I, I went up to that guy, went straight up to him. I was like, how do I get into that? He goes, can you fight? I said, you damn right. I can. He goes, well, you're in. And that oh. was it. So I went, I fought, I fought four or five times, won all my fights. And, um, wow. and then kept, and then became, and was invited to other fights, you know, of higher, you know, stature, and then so on and so forth. And then all the way up to the point of, you know, getting to the UFC and, and now, you know, sitting here talking to God, Gene. Hey, what, you know, what's crazy is, uh, I mean, here you are, you like, you know, you a little youngster, you know, looking at those videos and you like the martial arts, you knew that you liked it. And then you knew you kind of were gifted, I guess, when you were fighting, when you were a kid. Cause you're, you're winning your fights as a, as a kid yeah. or whatever. Right. And then you you watch this, uh, hoist Gracie video and then you get to meet him. And the next thing you oh, know, you, I mean, that's, isn't that interesting? That's it was, just, it that's was really cool, man. Fabulous. That's like, was, talk about manifesting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know exactly. I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? I definitely manifested that man. No yeah. doubt about it. i worked my butt off. I was self-taught for so many years. Mm-hmm. I went to, uh, speaking of the, the guy I met at Pizza Hut, he was, uh, uh, he used to go to uh, uh, a jiu-jitsu, a, a traditional Japanese jiu-jitsu, not Brazilian jiu-jitsu, but still, you know, still arm locks and chokes and, you know, all that stuff is just named something different, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, he was associated there and he's like, hey, if you ever want to go up to this place called Three Rivers Martial Art, um, they you know, they offer classes up there. I was like, Oh no way. Where's that at? And uh, so I think it's like an hour and 15 minutes away. It's an hour and 15 minute drive to get there. So I was like, well, the hell with it. I'm, I'm going to go up there, dude. I went in there and, uh, the instructor was a black belt and he had a cup, two other black belts that were in there. And then the rest were multicolored other belts. Yeah. And I, um, and I'm not kidding you. I went in there and I choked every damn one of them, <laughs> every one of them. <laughs> Yeah. And, they, and, and they, even then, you know, all the black belts, all the, all the other guys. And they go, where the hell are you from? Where, where did you come from? <laughs> I said, yeah. dude, I'm training in the garage over here with John Clendenin was his name. And he was like, oh, we know John. I was like, yeah, he recommended me. Come. I was like, dude, come in here anytime. Like you're more than welcome. And I never, I, you know, I never paid a drop fee a day in my life there mm-hmm. because I had so much to offer for them as well and to help them. And we, we became a big family and, and then, uh, they became associated with hoist. They became an association where mm-hmm. you pay a, you know, a monthly fee and he comes out three or four times a year to give seminars at your school. Wow. And then that relationship between he and I developed, uh, with hoist and, and going and seeing him at seminars and, and learning under his toolage and, 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 you know, his, uh, style and techniques yeah. and, 
it was it was great just to be in that presence of right. who 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 I thought was you know just you know cream of the crop man yeah. right you know and, and to get head nods like a, you know you know look at me and give me a little head nod like good job kid you know just it was uh, just it was so inspiring and it was it, it those memories will never leave man those were the best times ever when that dude came out and he was and he was kind of like what kind of unknown wasn't he and he, he came into the like the yeah. ult- ultimate fighting champions fighting these monsters and then he was just like making them tap out you know and he's he wasn't like a he wasn't like a big guy and these guys were monsters that was before like yeah that was before well, you had to make weight thing. yeah that's the beautiful thing but well then you didn't have to make weight guy yeah, you, it was just, like, it was just you just like, show up yeah. man you just show up man mm-hmm. whatever you weigh you weigh that's your weight and what's <laughs> funny about that story is they purposely uh, used hoist because he was he was like a buck seventy seventy five soaking wet, yeah. right? Uh, he was the I don't I don't want to use a bad the wrong terminology here, but he was the weaker of all the family, like you know the structure wise and mm-hmm. and and he wasn't strong, like you don't lift weights, and he, all he does is practice jujitsu, which his brother is named Hickson. Hicks and Gracie, he'd been in Japan kicking everybody's ass. He'd been, he was a star. Yeah. But so it was uh, originally they, they wanted Hickson to come in here and just wipe everybody out. But they thought, you know what? The, the better example for our, our family, our family jujitsu lineage is to use Hoist. Hoist can get the job done. But Hoist don't look like, you know, Hickson was ripped and he was stocky and, yeah. you know, muscular and this and that. And, you know, what Hoist looked like back then, he just looked like, you know, he would be giving yeah. you a spelling, you yeah, know, yeah, just yeah. teaching you math or something. Mm-hmm. And that just blew the doors off of everybody. They're like, what the hell? Mm-hmm. And and that, that was a beautiful strategy. It was it was set up beautifully. And they, they put the right guy in to get the job done. And, and that's the beautiful thing about, you know, jujitsu and the martial arts. It's like, you don't have to be, you know, this, you know, yeah. you don't need to, you, you don't have to bench 350. You don't, you know, you don't even have to bench anything. <laughs> you know, if you, you ever touch the weight in your life, it don't matter. It's you know, the martial good. arts gives you great discipline. It gives you great, um, uh, courage, uh, confidence. Yeah. And, uh, it is, it's a great tool for, you know, a, a human being to be able to have the, the confidence and, and, you know, let, you know, if, if you're sitting in line at Applebee's and somebody just steps in front of you, you, you know, you practice jujitsu for five, four or five years. It's not that you could kick the guy's ass or anything. You just say, oh, excuse me, the, uh, lines in the back, you, you you missed it. You know I mean? It just gives you that confidence of, <laughs> yeah. of, to be able to just speak, you know, yeah. you know, you know what I mean? Oh, like, absolutely. You know, there's a, probably a crappy example, but, um, but it just gives you that, that it gives you something, man. And that's, that's, and martial arts changed my life and, and it gave me a path, you know, it gave me, it gave me a purpose in life. Mm-hmm. It gave me a goal when my when I when I roll out of the bed, my feet hit the floor. I have a purpose. I have mm-hmm. I have you know April seventeenth. I'm fighting. You know every day it's you know to the grindstone. No, yeah. you know head down and just eyes on the prize, man. And it gave me such structure in life, and it really did give me uh, you know a path, and and it it, it, it was a beautiful thing. It was a beautiful. I needed it too because I I I, I needed it. You know, yeah. it was a small town. You know, thirty five hundred at the best. You know, which that mid south that 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 tornado that went through back there wrecked my town. That big tornado that went through this yeah. last season. Yeah, yeah, yep, it, yep. It took half my town away. Gone. I mean, gone. It's not even there anymore. Is that the same one that went through Joplin, Missouri? That one. Oh yeah, okay. probably yeah. yeah it yeah. went through Mayfield, Kentucky. Yeah, destroyed okay. that. It went through Dresden, Tennessee, which is my hometown. Okay, it took about a quarter, a quarter pie, if you would, out of out of that town. Just boom, maybe even half 
Yeah. Not even a quarter, maybe half. Um, just wreck it. And, uh, yeah, you know, just that small town kind of, you know, stuck in your ways, go to work, get up, go to work, get up, go to work. It just, it wasn't cutting it for me. I knew that I had a bigger purpose. I knew that I had, that I was, my life was more meaningful than, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. than working for the family business on a daily, you know, making, you know, 300, 400 bucks a week. Yeah. You know, yeah. I just, I wanted better. And I knew that it was there and I know, and I knew that I had the, the, the talent. I just need to be seen. I need someone to, to, to see it. Yeah. And, 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 and let me prove myself. And that's what I did. I put myself in front of the right people and I, I pushed and poked and, mm-hmm. and nosed around until I got where I wanted to be. Any advice that you can give young fighters coming up right now? Well, my only advice is that none, none, nothing in, 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 in the fight world comes easy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you have to work so hard and diligent at it. You have to give it your everything. And it's not a career. Yeah, it's an opportunity, mm-hmm. right? It's an opportunity. I can't, I can't, I can't fight forever, but I, I damn sure could guide on on a river for you know way way longer mm-hmm. and have a career way longer or be a machinist way longer than I can be a fighter. Those are opportunities. That's not the thing that that's not going to just that's not the only thing that's going to get you through. It because you know it's a young man sport. When I say young man, you know, thirty five ish. Yeah. You know, you're still a young man at thirty five, and if you haven't made Conor McGregor money, then yeah, uh, you better have something to fall back on and make sure that you know you're educated. Yeah. Um, and you have you have something, and you know, go be a fireman, go go you know be a cop, do be something that that will give you something back at the end, you know some longevity with, you know, your, uh, your pensions and things like that. Be smart because, um, fighting's not easy and not, not everyone makes the millions of dollars. They make a few hundred thousand here and there a year. And that only last you, you know, 10, 12 years. And then what? Right. got to be smart. You gotta be smart because, and you know, injuries happen, catastrophic injuries happen where you're, you, you get poked in the eye and, and you, yeah. you, you cut your lens and now your eyes gone and now you can't pass your, uh, physical, you're not allowed, you know, anything could happen. Right. You know, so it's not, yeah, it's gnarly. It's not the, you know, not the end all thing for you. You have to, you got to get, get yourself prepared for what's going to be after and make sure you got that in, 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 in mind. And then when you know, what you're going to fall back on, go ahead and give her, give her hell, man. Give her hell. <laughs> Get out there and do your absolute best and, and try to, you know, do that Conor McGregor money. Then you don't have to worry about that fall back, but yeah. you better have a safety net. Yeah. Do you think that, um, you know, Conor McGregor got wealthy, not, not just because of, I mean, kind of like his showmanship and kind of like, I mean, you were talking about how fighters are, you know, everybody's kind of cool to each other and everything, but it seemed like he was always like starting stuff with, with folks, you know, like different, different fighters and stuff. And just, was that all kind of, is that all kind of show or is that kind of like, I, yeah, I, I, a hundred percent of a hundred percent of a show. It's it, it, to him. It's business. Yeah. Okay. Um, it was all, it was just all business. It's like, they, you know, you need that, you need those guys. You need those Ric Flairs. You know what I mean? Like, Ooh, yeah. baby, you just get that. Get just get to talking. But yeah. you know, those yeah. fights are they're set up and staged, and, and everybody knows what the outcome is. Here, I mean, in Connor's case, uh, you know, he would predict, "Hey, I'm taking you out in the second and, and and gosh damn it, he'd go out there and he'd perform, and he would get the job done. Uh-huh. You know, he would talk a lot, but he backed it up. Yeah. So you got to be able to have those two elements. You know what I mean? If you're going to talk mm-hmm. a lot of shit, you're going to talk about this guy's mama and his family and get him so mad, he wants to pick a chair up and throw it at you at the damn 
press conference, you better know that cat's coming after you. <laughs> you better know he's coming after you yeah, when yeah. that damn cage closes. So yeah. you got and you got to perform, which he did, and uh-huh. you know which, which he did, and and that's his, and it's no secret to his success, but uh, that's definitely what he did. He 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 showed up and he got the damn job done, and he made a lot of damn money along the way. You, it sounds like you worked with him on the last, is he, is he acting okay? Is he, I mean, is he, Oh, dude. is he a good actor? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was, That's awesome. <laughs> uh, I was, I was curious when I, when I was coming out there, I was like, well, I want to, uh, I wonder how he comes across on camera. If he, if, if he can relate to this world, because most of everything we do is, well, all of it, but basically is, is fake. It's yeah. I act like I punch you in the face. You act like you took it, you know, but, wherever the camera angle is, is how it all, all the movie stuff looks like, Oh, that looked real. Well, it wasn't, no one got hit or whatever. So I wanted to see how that translated to him and buddy, let me tell you, he killed it. He, and when it it came time for him to come into the room, being ferocious and heavy panting and breathing and sweating, buddy, he was very intimidating. Nice. (laughs) He looked good. He looked really, really good. And, uh, I would, when that when that movie comes out, you got everybody should go in and watch that because Connor, Connor did a really good job. Nice man. When it, when is it supposed to yeah, come out? He did. Oh, that I don't even know. We just yeah. we just got done with it just a month and a half ago, so they got to do you know probably a year or so. Maybe. Well, actually, one of my buddies right now he they're here in Vegas. Uh, Roadhouse is they're shooting in uh, the the Apex Center. Uh, they're going to shoot this weekend. Oh wait, no, they're going to do some rehearsing next, next weekend. They're going to shoot, uh, because Jed Gyllenhaal's character fought in the UFC, the, the actual UFC uh, in the movie, right? Um, in the movie. Okay. And I think he hurt somebody real bad and he felt bad about it. So his story moves him on and he leaves uh, and he goes away and he leaves, he leaves fighting career behind. I don't want to give too much, but yeah. something like that, um, <laughs> So awesome, something man. like that. So they're out here shooting right now and there's some fight scenes that they want to do and they want to have the live, they want that crowd, right? So they're going to do this, sh- they're going to do the show, mm-hmm. right? They're going to do the, the, the UFC and they're going to have an inter- uh, inter- intermission. And in between that, Jake's going to come out and, and do a movie fight using the crowd, using the cage, using the surrounding, using the people's voices and, you know, nice. all the environment. Cool. Yeah, so they're gonna be shooting that. So that's not even all the way done. So when does it come out? That's that. That's I don't know, man. Okay. Five, six months, maybe. Copy. Yeah. Maybe not even. Maybe it could be shorter. You know, technology now where they can edit things. You know, that things are a lot different now. Right. They might be able to get it piece gonna, together pretty quick. I'm gonna put you on the spot, man. So Uh-oh. my last uh, and final question is about music. So, um, any, any particular music that you have been listening to? I usually ask everybody that, you know, at the end, just to kind of find out, like, is there, is there something that you've been listening to or is there anything you that know, you, you, you kind of just listen to whatever? Yeah. The, the thing is, I'm, 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 I, I'm not very select with that. I enjoy music. Uh, um, yeah, cool. I, I don't have a very particular, um, if I'm in, if I got some, some of the guys over and we're shooting pool, mm-hmm. uh, I like to put on some country. Yeah. I figured that just, man. You know, I, I could have guessed that for sure. Yeah. I'll right put on. some country music on and we'll uh-huh. just shoot pool and we'll talk crap with one another and bust <laughs> each other's balls. And just, yeah. yeah. So that if, if there were a go-to, mm-hmm. if I had a go-to, which that is, you yeah. know, on Saturdays or whatever, the boys come over, yeah. I'll put some country on, but, um, I'm not that particular. I won't, you know, like change. I won't yeah. deliberately go and, and put it on a certain, you know, a channel or put it on a certain uh, playlist or whatever. Cool, man. What, what, when's your next, yeah. what, what's your next uh, trip? Are you doing any kind of any exotic trips, uh, fly fishing? Are you doing anything like that you can think of that you have set in the plans for 23? No. Anything going on? No. Well, I this year I haven't. I've I've fished probably, dude. I probably fished three times, man. I, I've oh, been busy. I'm missing it so bad. Like yeah. I, I've been I've been grabbing my my old uh, um, uh, what, what 
what is it? What is uh, that knockoff? Uh, White River. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. My White River that I got in, you know, in 2008 is still in my garage and the line is trash, but I just go, I sit out here in the front and I'll just cast and hit marks and, Good. and you know, try different things. And But I'm feeling so bad, but next year is going to be different. Next year is going to be, I'm not, I'm not doing the same kind of year let's, <laughs> that uh, I did this year. Let's, um, let's plan on fishing together, man. You got it. That that I'm gonna hold you to it, and Let's, I'm gonna come up there, and we're gonna fish, and we're gonna go, and we're gonna trap some Sasquatch. <laughs> sounds, <laughs> sounds awesome, man. Let's go to like let's go to uh, you know where we went before, but let's stay down there and uh, hell you know, yeah for a couple couple nights, you know, and, and backpack it in. Yeah, let's go do oh, that. Oh man, man. I would I would die. Okay. That, that would that would tickle my fancy like you wouldn't believe. Hell yeah. Well, let's 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 definitely plan that, man. Let's do that. Let's do it. I would, what's the I would, be, what, what what time do you, what time of the year you think is the best? I would think uh, I would think uh, July ish. You know, would okay. probably, like Mid? that would probably be good. Yeah, July would probably be epic down there. And then we can yeah, we, then we can we we you know you know where you come down the bottom of that trail, we can just stay down that right there and just fish up and down the hell yeah down that trail right there. Wouldn't that be fun? You got it. Oh yeah. my God! Would it be fun? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's not like fun to me. <laughs> well, Mike Pyle, so good to talk to you, my friend, and uh, catch up with you. And uh, I, like, like I said, man, let's let's fish together uh, soon, and uh, let's not let so many years go by, huh? You're right, guy. Let's not let years go by like that again. Yeah, I mean, never again. Yeah, let's do that, man. And you got hey, it. Thank you so much for being on uh, my podcast, my friend. Your your podcast holds the record for the the longest. <laughs> we could probably keep going. <laughs> oh, but, we could go on today. <laughs> for right, sure. Guy Dean, you're the best. Uh, all right, buddy. Love you, brother. I yeah. appreciate it. Love you Thanks too, bro. Thanks for having me. Have yeah, a great man. night. All right, man. We'll talk soon. You got it. Bye-bye. All right, right bye-bye.